right, let's now bring you the latest out of South Sudan. And this is news that we are receiving this evening. A group of armed militiamen loyal to South Sudan's Riek Machar has abandoned a planned march into Bor Town in the state of Jongle. Government sources say rebel leaders, a tribal militia, has stood down after talks with community elders. Now, this comes after Machar said that he mistrusts the government's call for a ceasefire. Here's KTN's Ashamulu with the latest. The glimmer of hope for a ceasefire in South Sudan on Sunday morning seemed out of reach. Thousands of youths allied to rebel leader Riek Machar were planning to march to Bor, a city reclaimed from their hold early in the week by government troops. The move left humanitarian agencies in South Sudan at high alert. The marching group is reportedly part of the infamous White Army, a tribal militia group feared by many for its vicious attacks. By evening, however, the forces had abandoned their plans to march. South Sudan's government officials said community leaders had persuaded the White Army to go home. The youths had already been located by a UN surveillance flight about 50 kilometers from Bor. <laughs> These new developments have opened an awkward space in the ongoing attempts by regional leaders to start dialogue between President Salva Kiir and his rival Riyak Machar. Our government has positively responded to the demands of the international community and a guard in particular. While the government said it was ready for an immediate ceasefire, Machar expressed mistrust in the mediation process, saying he needed a leveled Hello. negotiation. Ceasefires are negotiated by two delegations, and then mechanisms for monitoring the ceasefires are put in place so that the ceasefire becomes a credible ceasefire. The two-week-long clashes have exposed more than the deeply rooted political and ethnic challenges faced by the young nation. They have also left South Sudan's economy dangling in instability. The nation relies on oil for 98% of its national budget. The oil-producing states are unfortunately at the helm of those affected by the unrest. Allies like China are now feeling the ripples from the instability in South Sudan. China import 77 percent of south sudan's crude oil leaving japan to import 14 percent and india four percent China is greatly concerned with the development of South Sudan's situation and is promoting negotiations in its own way. We've been keeping close communication with South Sudan and its neighboring countries as well as some regional organizations like the African Union. We will work with all relevant parties to promote the conflicting sides in solving their disputes through dialogue and negotiation and promote the situation of South Sudan to resume stability as soon as possible. A regional bloc, IGAD, gave Kir and Machar up to the 30th of December to cease the fighting and to meet face to face by the 31st of December. But with the two main actors drifting further from the prospect of dialogue, the world is now left alarmed that fears of a possible genocide in South Sudan might become a reality. Ashamwilu, KTN Weekend Prime.